Welcome to Winchester News Online with Stuart Appleby. Hello, welcome to Winchester News Online. Here are today's top stories. Jellygate rumbles on, student union hits back in changing room rail. And they're shocked and obviously a bit angry, um, so we're dealing with it immediately. The Green Party slams new park and ride scheme. And Winchester struts its stuff on the catwalk in the name of fair trade. A row involving Winchester University's football side dubbed Jellygate has seen the university fine despite protests it was not responsible. Grant Payne reports. I'm here at the King George V playing fields and behind me are the changing rooms. Bournemouth University had just beaten Winchester University and won the Bucks League and it was the away changing rooms that were left in a state with champagne bottles on the floor and jelly smeared all over the walls. But it's going to be Winchester University that have to fork out for the bill and pay the cleaning costs that they're going to be fined for. Uh, I feel that it's a bit unfair for them just to do it straight away when they've not given us a chance to come back to them and say what's happened because we weren't the only team down there um, and it was the away changing rooms that it was in as well. And they're shocked and obviously a bit angry um, so we're dealing with it immediately to make sure that they're not unduly punished for it. I'm disappointed that it's happened. Um, it's a shame we get to this stage of the season and we've got stuff happening. Um, I don't. I hate when uh, people look at our cam because I think it's disrespectful. Um, you know, all of our teams work incredibly hard, and for things like this, it just stunts their progression and development. Um, so hopefully, it will be rectified. But yeah, I'm not very happy about it at the moment. So hopefully, Bournemouth will rectify the problem and it, we won't have any more issues like this again. Winchester City Councillor Dave Savage issued the following statement. Winchester City Council are liaising with the Winchester Student Union following the problems at the King George V Pavilion following a football match involving Winchester University and we are taking action in accordance with council terms and regulations. Winchester University plans to appeal this decision and will hope that the fine gets overturned. Grant Payne, Winchester News Online. Winchester City Council has received damning criticism over the cost and planning of a new park and ride service which is set to open in April. The Green Party has branded it a waste of money. Joey Lipscomb reports. Winchester City Council have fallen under heavy criticism from the Green Party in the run-up to the opening of a new park and ride service just outside the city. The park and ride, which is to be completed in April, will cost the council £7 million and will also accommodate students with a designated area specifically for them, although the Green Party has spoken out and they are against the council's investment. I think it's a very bad decision-making process and it's dishonest as well. It, it, uh, what it, what it does, they, they keep saying that the purpose is to reduce traffic when they know without taking any measures to remove car parking from the centre, that it will actually multiply traffic. We know much more about park and ride and we know that it doesn't do the job. Well, you get a worse traffic system in Winchester, you get um, uh, 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 more, more traffic on the outskirts, you get more carbon in total, so it's, 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 it's a, a, a bad move from the climate point of view, it's a bad move from traffic in Winchester point of view. The Green Party claimed the council have wasted money, but Winchester City have defended the new service and what it will provide to the local community. These things do cost that sort of money. Um, I'm not quite sure where the uh, waste is because I mean there are not many luxurious bits of the uh, park and ride. It's uh, very serviceable or will be. It should have benefits to the environment and, and the general air quality in Winchester. The council are confident that the £7 million investment will be justified following the opening of the new park and ride service in spring this year. Jerry Lipscomb, Winchester News Online. Conservative proposals to send former army officers into schools to tackle discipline has been called ridiculous by Labour. Tories believe the idea would provide inspiration for children. Catherine Hayes went to find out more. The Labour Party has criticised the Conservatives' proposal to train and employ ex-soldiers to impose discipline in schools. To, to talk about sending the army into schools is, is a ridiculous notion. The uh, discipline in schools depends very much on the good heads, and we have very good heads locally, so I, I do not see what the problem is that the Conservatives seem to be talking about. The Conservatives are proposing longer school days, harder discipline and a more traditional curriculum. 
Discipline in the classroom is very much key to our school reforms and we've got all manner of proposals that want to get us there. As far as we're concerned, if you don't have orderly classrooms, then teachers can't teach and children most certainly can't learn. So Troops for Teachers is an idea that senior officers that have finished their career and retiring from the forces go into the classroom and we, we think that idea will travel nicely across the, across the pond. The Liberal Democrats have also taken a similar stance against the Conservatives, saying that it's important to remember that children are in school to learn, not just to be kept under control. More good teachers are needed in schools from all kinds of backgrounds. But if the Conservatives win next election, will tackling discipline stay high on their agenda? Catherine Hayes, Winchester News Online. Dr Mick Jardine has defended two members of staff who inadvertently caused a temporary shutdown of the university's email server. This following a spam attack that took place on Tuesday. Madeline Klippel finds out more. Yesterday, spam emails attacked the University of Winchester's email system and students and staff could not access their inbox outside campus. Due to two members of staff ignoring the rules of not giving out their personal information regarding their IT accounts, spam emails are now being sent out from the university to the rest of the world. Sarah Fulford, IT user service manager, does not want to comment on camera, but she told us that... The members of staff are aware of not giving out their personal details, but the rule has been ignored. Dr. Mick Chardin defended the two members of staff after they had been accused of causing email chaos. I hope there's not a sort of witch hunt of, of, of people who, who are responsible for this because it's, it's quite an easy mistake to make. Uh, and, um, you know, I think that the better way forward is to look at ways of stopping it happen in the future in terms of warnings and, and better, better filter systems. The problem has now been solved and the university hopes it won't happen again. Madeline Klippel, Winchester News Online. And now it's over to Lucy Pilgrim with the sports. Thank you, Stuart. AFC Totten face Christchurch in the Hampshire Senior Cup semi-final. The winners will get a day out at Bournemouth's Dean Court for the final. Jason Curtis reports. AFC Totten face Christchurch in the Hampshire Cup semi-final. Totten dominated the first half and took a deserved lead 20 minutes in. Mike Gosney pounced on the rebound after the Christchurch keeper kept out the first effort. They doubled their lead ten minutes later after good work down the right by Nathaniel Sherborne set up James Taylor who produced a turn and finish that Johan Cruyff himself would have been proud of. The tie was all but over five minutes later after Ian Richardson's shot was just too hot to handle for the Christchurch keeper. But the Christchurch manager could still see the funny side. The best the away side could muster was a tame effort on the stroke of half time. Christchurch came out in the second half with more vigour and were denied a foothold in the game after an excellent save from the Totten keeper Gareth Barfoot but Totten stayed resolute with defending desperate at times. The Stags should have had a fourth in stoppage time, but Jamie Wiskin produced the miss of the match. Totten ran out 3-0 winners and head to Dean Court for the final. Yeah, 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 very, very pleased tonight. Um, uh, it's good to get a win. Uh, we can put that away now and concentrate on the league programme, so that's good, yeah. It's, you know, it's another cup final for the, for the club and um, it's a good cup final, it's a good competition, so uh, yeah, we're pleased to be in it, and um, we don't know who we got yet, but uh, it, you know, it's something we can, we can we can look forward to now, and uh, you know, like I say, put away. And uh... thank you for watching. Join us again next week, and for the latest developments, log on to winnell.co.uk.